Yolanda! Can we talk? What's up? I'm bored, so I guess so. Um, so I... I've always wanted to tell you that. Tell me what? I like you. What? My family's poor, so I don't smell great all the time. And my clothes and textbooks are all hand-me-downs. And I'm short and skinny, so people have always made fun of me since middle school. That didn't change in high school, and that's been hard. But when I had the same homeroom as you sophomore year, you would always talk to me and show me your textbook when I forgot mine. And you would make people stop when they were making fun of me. You were always so nice to a guy like me. And that always made me really happy, and I like you. It's only been a week since we met, but I really, really like you. So Yolanda, I mean, Yoli, please, go out with me. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> I can't believe you're actually asking me out. <laughs> huh? To think I would go out with a poor loser like you. <laughs> no way, that is ridiculous. <laughs> That's not gonna happen. <laughs> oh, what? What are you talking about? You still don't get it? <laughs> I was messing with you. <laughs> you were messing with me? I made a bet with my friends. <laughs> that if I could make you like me within one month, that they would buy me lunch. Why do you think someone like me would even talk to a poor loser like you? <laughs> what? I thought a sad poor loser like you would fall for me right away, but I can't believe it only took a week. You're so stupid. <laughs> Don't get the wrong idea just because I was nice to you. <laughs> you... you lied to me? I really fell for you. You lied to me. <laughs> you just got the wrong idea. Just think about it for a second. Take a look in the mirror. <laughs> no way you're good enough for me. <laughs> like, just be honest to yourself. <laughs> I can't believe this. I trusted you. Thanks for giving me a good story to tell. Everyone's gonna be talking about it tomorrow. Good for you, you're gonna be famous. <laughs> oh, but now that the bet's over, don't talk to me anymore, okay? <laughs> you're gonna make me smell. <laughs> hey, Mike, long time no see. How are you? Hey, it's been a while. You seem well. Sorry, couldn't say hi just now. It's been a while, so I got nervous. <laughs> it's fine. Don't worry about it. But I was so surprised. When I heard you were coming to the reunion for the first time, I was excited to see what kind of person you had become. Who knew you would become so hot? What? Did you think some dirty homeless looking dude would show up? <laughs> I didn't think that. But I was surprised that you became so cool. A handsome guy in an expensive suit. And you graduated from that top tier college, right? And are working at that huge trading company? I heard you're making like $70,000. You're amazing. No, I'm not. It's all thanks to my parents for sending me to a good college. I had to study really hard to keep up. I'm still an underling at work. Mike, you're so humble. You're amazing. <laughs> oh, well, thanks. Yolanda, you've changed a lot. You're not a stranger. Don't call me Yolanda. Call me Yoli. No, that's okay. It's not like we're close or anything. What are you talking about? We're friends. <laughs> what? Hey, since the reunion is almost over, everyone's going to the after party. But do you want to go together somewhere? Just the two of us? 
I know this great bar. <laughs> Let's have a private after party. <laughs> huh? You want to have a private after party with you and me? Why? Come on, don't be shy. You're single, right? But when other girls were hitting on you just now, you brushed them off, right? I know that's because you're still into me. <laughs> what? You don't have to play dumb. <laughs> Ever since you asked me out in high school, you've always been into me. And to become a good enough man for me, you worked hard and got a good job, right? And the reason you came to the reunion today is to show me what kind of man you become, right? I can't believe it. <laughs> I feel so lucky. So, I'm okay with being your girlfriend now. <laughs> um, what? Since you've always only liked me, I'm all yours. You can do whatever you want to me. So, come outside in about five minutes. Let's do something fun together. You're disgusting. What? You're repulsive. What are you talking about? Huh? You think I still like you? How dumb are you? I've had enough of this. Huh? What? What's going on? What are you talking about? You're still single because you like me, right? How could you even think that? It's true that I'm not married, but I have a fiancé. What? A fiancé? Yeah. I wasn't interested in those other women. Because I have a fiancé, not because of you. You have nothing to do with this. So stop misunderstanding things and just leave me alone. No, wait, just a wait a second. I'm saying that I'm okay being your girlfriend. Me. So what? I told you I have a fiancé. I don't need you. I don't know who your fiancé is, but I know I can make you so much more satisfied. She's probably only after you for your money. I bet she doesn't even like you. Don't talk badly about my fiancé. You don't even know her. And the person who's after me for money is you. I heard that you've already been divorced twice. And both times you got divorced, it's because you cheated. So they took all your money. And you're like, a hundred thousand dollars in debt, right? I heard you're looking for someone to pay that off for you. I heard that the debt is due soon, and you're panicking. What? No, that's... Even if you weren't in debt, I wouldn't date you, though. In high school, you thought you could do whatever you wanted to me because I was poor. You tricked me just for a bet with your friends. I still haven't forgotten about that, you know? And then you find out I have a good job, so you're nice to me all of a sudden. No way, just, just wait a second. You have it all wrong. When I dumped you and said all those mean things, Ever since graduating, I've always regretted it. I've wanted to apologize. It was awful what I did. I'm so sorry. You've regretted it? I can't believe you would lie like that. I'm not lying. I know what you've been doing. After graduating, at every reunion, you've been telling everyone the story of how the poor loser asked you out. That you've been making fun of me to everyone for asking you out. What? Uh, how did you find out about that? Your old friends told me. They just came to me during the reunion. And brought you down just so they could get closer to me. They told me everything. No! I didn't do that! They're lying! Trust me, Mike! I can't trust you. I don't care anymore anyways. I'm not gonna go to the after party. I'm gonna go home. I'm never coming to another reunion again, either. Everyone is treating me differently just because I'm doing well now. You're all awful. Wait! Don't go just yet! Please, just let me borrow some money! I don't have any money to lend you. I'm done talking to you. I'm going home now. See ya! Mike! 
Afterwards, after I stopped messaging Yolanda, I got up to leave. Yolanda and some other freeloaders tried to get me to stay, but I shook them off and left the reunion. Afterwards, I heard that Yolanda's debt due date came and went, and the court took her home and all of her possessions. And now she's working in the sex industry to try and pay back the rest. I guess that instead of coming to the reunion, she should have been trying to work off that debt. I just don't get her. After seeing Yolanda's fall from grace, I finally felt at peace. And I married my fiancé and got promoted at work. And we're ha having a baby next year. My life is just great. This happiness is a result of the rage I felt when Yolanda tricked me and made fun of me. So I guess in some way, this is all thanks to her. <laughs> I'm divorcing you. We've been together for 10 years, but I've reached my limit. Why? I don't understand. Lately, everything about you is like an old lady. I feel sick when I'm with you. What? Your face has wrinkles and spots and you've gained weight, right? You're a completely an unattractive old woman. I'm already 40 and my looks may have changed, but you're no different than me. I'm different from you because I'm always seen younger than my actual age. An old woman like you doesn't belong to me. I can't believe you're trying to divorce me because of such a reason. Everyone has their own reasons for breaking up, right? I don't think many people break up because of changes in looks. Anna, even at 34 years old, she's still pretty and beauty conscious. You two look so different that no one can tell you guys are sisters. Why are you suddenly talking about my sister? She has nothing to do with this. We're dating. What? We met by chance in town last year. We've been close since then. That's cheating. To be clear, I'm not dating Anna just for fun. After I divorce you, I'm planning to marry her. Are you serious? Oh, the moving company's here. Don't tell me you're moving out of the house. Of course I'm moving out. This apartment is rented under your name. There's no reason for me to stay here. You're so selfish. No matter what you say, you can't change my mind. I've got a business meeting today, but I'm coming home as soon as I finish work. Wait for me until I get home. That's impossible. The moving company has a tight schedule, you know. You can't just leave without even a discussion. Shut up. I'll leave the divorce papers in the living room. Throw them out and go follow them on your next day off. Bye. I'm not done talking. After that, I texted and called him many times, but he never replied nor answered my calls. I finished work early and went back to my house, but all his stuff was gone. We had been married for 10 years. Although my husband was a bit free-spirited, I thought we were having a good time together. My heart was completely broken by my husband's cruel actions, and I ended up signing the divorce papers. I went to submit them the next day. I thought I'd be able to get over this with some time, but it didn't go that easy. Was yesterday your father's funeral? I'm sorry for your loss. I'm busy with all the formalities related to my father. I still haven't been able to grab lunch even though it's almost 3pm. It's not easy being the eldest daughter. Good luck with that. Why the hell did you contact me? You ignored all my texts and calls and ran away from me for three years without even paying alimony. I've been too busy enjoying my life as a newlywed with Anna. Oh, it's still not too late to send us a wedding gift, you know? Who would give a wedding gift to a cheating bastard like you? Anyways, just tell me the reason why you texted me after all these years. Don't be so mad. 
I did switch to your sister, but I thought I'd let you do your job as my wife. What are you talking about? We're strangers now. But we were once married and you know my parents well. So you shall take care of my mom with dementia. Your mother? She hasn't been feeling well lately, so she had a full checkup. As a result, she was diagnosed with a mild cognitive dysfunction. She was in such good health when I last saw her. She says she was going to live in a senior living facility so as not to bother us, but that facility was more luxurious than I thought. So your mother couldn't afford it? Mom says she could take care of the money somehow, but I'm sure she's trying to use my dad's inheritance. I can't let that happen. Why not? If that's something your mom inherited, she has the right to do whatever she wants with it. My dad was an investor. He made a fortune. Your father mentioned that his job could be done from home, but I didn't know he was an investor. But I don't see any problems using that money for your mother's facility. If mom uses this inheritance to get into that nice facility, there won't be much money left when the time comes for me to inherit it. That's why I don't want her to use that money. You are so selfish. Anna and I don't want to spend our time taking care of her. That's why you were chosen for this job. How selfish can you be? I'm sure your mother won't agree to this. She's already waiting outside your house with the suitcase. What? I told her that you were willing to take care of her. She was overjoyed. So I dropped her off at your place a few minutes ago. I never agreed to this. But you and mom got along great when we were married. You guys used to go shopping together regularly. I like your mother, but that doesn't mean I can take care of her. Her condition is still mild, so you can have a pretty much normal conversation with her. I'm sure you can handle it. You know that I'm feeling down with losing my dear father, don't you? How much more do you want me to suffer? Don't act like a tragic heroine. Deep down, I know you must be happy that you got to inherit a lot of money from your father. How do you know about that? Anna told me. Your mother died when you were young, right? Your father raised you guys on his own all these years, and he worked hard to save up a lot of money for his precious daughters. That's true, but. And the amount he saved is 200k. According to Anna, you're going to get it all, right? That's right. It seems he had a lawyer prepare a will before his death. We got a call from that lawyer yesterday. He said Anna won't be able to inherit a single penny. Your father is a terrible person. He was furious at her for cheating with you. That's one of the reasons he wouldn't let her inherit the money. I don't care about that. We are going to take it all. Huh? Actually, Anna's at her parents' house now. She's searching for the inheritance. What? No need to be surprised. Anna has a key too. How could she try to steal the money when she didn't even show up for the funeral? I cannot believe you guys. Oh, I just got a text from Anna. She says she found the money. Oh no. She found the safety deposit box in her father's study. The 200k cash was in it. How did she open it? I thought the passcode was only written in the will. There was a note on the back of the safety deposit box. It said, It's going to be a challenge to withdraw money from the bank without me, so I'm keeping the cash in this box. And the code was also written on it. I didn't check the back of the box. Your dad's an idiot. He was just worried about me. Don't you dare insult my father. Whatever. Now we can have a luxurious life. Stop messing around that house. If she's not gonna leave, I'll call the police. Anna is your family. The police won't come unless she did something big enough to get on the news. 
I'm heading to my parents' house right now. I will never forgive you and Anna. You can hate us all you want, but you're not gonna get this money back. How's mom doing? Is it almost time for her to go to heaven? How could you say such things? I'm an only child. If mom dies, all the inheritance will be mine. What's wrong with longing for it? She's your own mother who raised you up. I can't believe you look forward to your mother's death. Well, I'm grateful to her, but it was my dad who was the breadwinner. Now my mom is just an old woman with dementia, so I won't miss her even if she's gone. You're the worst. No matter what you say, you're just going to sound like a sore loser. Well then, please continue to take care of mom so I can inherit her money. I'll take good care of your mother. I'm surprised you aren't speaking back to me. I'm going to have her live in that luxurious facility starting next month. There's a chance she'll fully recover, so things should be fine. What? She'll still have to go to the hospital regularly, so I'll take care of that. Since I owe your mother a lot. What are you talking about? Dementia can never be cured, right? In your mother's case, it's just a mild cognitive impairment. She has become a little forgetful, but it won't affect her daily life. It's an early symptom of dementia. In this condition, it can't be diagnosed as dementia. Huh? So with proper treatment and prevention, there's a good chance of full recovery. No way! I accompanied her to the regular checkup yesterday. Her doctor told me that since your mother's condition was detected at an early stage, there's a good chance she'll recover. Then why would you let her live in that facility? She's going to that expensive senior living facility, right? She had no intention of letting me take care of her. What? When you told her that I was willing to take care of her, she thought there was something behind it. She pretended to be more forgetful than she really was and came to my place to figure out what you were up to. So she tricked me? And sure enough, she was surprised to know what had happened since it was completely different from what she had heard from you. With her forgetfulness, I was sure there'd be no problem no matter what you told her. Your mother is still in good health, but she's 78 years old and living alone has become a source of anxiety for her. So that's why we've arranged for her to move into a facility. She's going to use my father's money to pay for it, right? All you care about is money. It may be mom's money now, but when she passes away, I'll be inheriting it. I won't allow you guys to waste that money. Legally, it's true that you'll be inheriting her money, but all the savings she has now was earned by herself, not by your father. Cut the funny jokes. Mom has always been a housewife. From what I've heard, your mother was the investor making all the money, while your father was jobless. What are you talking about? Right after you were born, your father suddenly quit his job and started living lazily. So your mother decided to invest in stocks as a way to make money at home. I never heard of such a thing. She said she tried not to show any sign of her working so that you wouldn't have to worry about anything. But when I asked dad about his work, he said he was an investor. He was lying. He felt ashamed of telling you the truth, being jobless. Then why didn't she divorce dad, who was so lazy? She wanted to, but you and your father had similar personalities and were very close, right? She decided not to divorce him for the sake of you. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. Even if the money was earned by mom, it doesn't change the fact that I'm inheriting it. Actually, she gave me that money as a living will. What? 
She was pretty angry with you about how you divorced me three years ago. But this time, you made her hit the limit. I'm her own son. It's absolutely ridiculous for her to choose you, a stranger, to inherit her money. Who was the one longing for his own mother's misfortune? That's. And about my father's inheritance you guys stole from me? I'll make sure to have you pay that back. You don't have to pay that back. How can you be so sure? It was your own sister, Anna, who stole it from you. I looked it up on the internet. It's called kinship theft, and the punishment can be waived. Family members who don't live together are excluded. Oh. I've done a lot of research over the past few days. It looks like I can file a criminal charge against Anna, since she doesn't live with me. Is that true? Yes, it's true. But if you return all the money you stole, I can let you guys go without making this a police matter. Anna and I are going on a luxury Europe trip starting tomorrow. We've already paid for the tour, so there's not much left. I don't care. If you don't want to pay me back, I'll have to call the police. I'll pay you back. I'll pay you back, so please don't call the police. And the alimony that was settled in court three years ago. You haven't paid me a penny yet. Don't make me pay for that, too. I can't pay both at the same time. Actually, I've been preparing to enforce the payment. Oh, no. The conditions for the property attachment had been met. I'm sure you'll hear from my lawyer soon. Please stop. There is no point in running away. I've been told by your mother that I can go all the way to make you take responsibility for what you did. I'll chase you to the ends of the world, so be prepared. As for the thievery, it's all Anna's doing. You should charge Anna for the 200k. Then I'll manage to pay you alimony at least. You said you'd do anything to protect her. But now, you're putting all the blame on Anna. Because it was Anna who actually did it. But you're the one who encouraged her to steal it, no? With what evidence? I just sent Anna the same message, and she told me it was you who planned the robbery in the first place. What? She even sent me a screenshot of the conversation with you. Seriously? Even if you didn't commit the robbery, it's still a crime to provoke someone to do it. It's called instigator. No kidding. So you two better pay me back the 200k and alimony. I should never have divorced you if this was going to happen. After that, the two wanted to avoid enforcement, so they paid me a total of 30k in alimony. I also demanded a repayment of my stolen inheritance. I was relieved to receive the money in one lump sum. It seems that they had taken out a debt in order to pay me that money. According to the lawyer, my sister can claim for the infringement of her share of the inheritance. But neither my sister nor my ex-husband seem to know about it, so I'll keep quiet about it. Although Jimmy had a job, they're having a hard time making ends meet. He also became ill due to stress and has recently taken a leave of absence. They can barely survive day to day. My sister also started working at a sketchy bar to pay off her debts. However, she is not making as much money as she would like. I heard that she got into a relationship with the bar owner to negotiate her salary, and things got messy between her and Jimmy. Karma gets back to you, I believe. I had a painful experience, but I would like to live peacefully from now on.